pray as we look to God's Word this morning. And I hope that you are expectant. And can I encourage you to reach out? Maybe be intentional this morning, right now, just to open your heart to God, to reach out and, and let Him know your need. Show yourself dependent on Him. And expect Him to speak to you this morning. How does God speak to us? It could be a small whisper. It could be a thought. It could be just a, a, an unctioning, a feeling of something. God can speak in different ways. God primarily speaks through His Word. And so, God, we want to hear what You have to say to us today. May our spirits connect with Your Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So say strong faith. strong faith. We may have faith, but we can have a stronger faith. Who wants a strong faith? I don't want an average faith. I don't want a lukewarm faith. I want a genuine God-honoring kind of faith. And so last week, today, we're just going to look at the Scriptures. Like, I don't want to define faith for myself. I want to look at faith and say, what does the Scriptures define faith as? Um, as I said, you can have faith, but you can have a stronger faith. There was on a few occasions when Jesus encountered people, he said to them, Oh, you of little faith. On one occasion with the apostles, they were having a conversation with Jesus. They realized they fell short of his standard. And so they said to Jesus, Increase our faith. So you of little faith and increase our faith. So what does it tell us? There's room for growth. All of us, none of us have arrived. There's room for expansion. We can trust God more and more and more. So the question is, what is faith? If you were handed a microphone today, what would you say faith is? How would you define faith? We, we know that so much you said about faith. Maybe some of us think that faith is just about the miraculous, God making impossible things possible. Is faith just the general term for Christianity? Just repeating a bit of what we said last week. Is faith just some belief system? Is faith a set of rules? Or is faith spirituality? Or is faith that phrase that we just loosely throw around to struggling people and say, oh, just have faith. You know, when you've got nothing else to say, just have faith. Just have faith, because it will just fix it. Eh? Is, is that what we understand faith to be? And so it's so hard to, to say that faith is one thing um, or, or to give it one phrase. Um, and so what I did last week is presented a picture to you, and today your picture becomes reality. So hold your diamond, and uh, we went the extra mile to put double-sided tape on the back of your diamond. And so, thank you, Selah. Give him a hand. That, uh, so we said faith is like a diamond. A diamond is one object, but it's multifaceted. A proper, expensive, properly cut diamond is meant to have 58 sides. Okay, so you can go count how many are on that one. Because I told you it's real. You can go evaluate it somewhere. But I want you to take this diamond. Um, I couldn't find them last week, so we made the effort to find them for this week, Sunday. We put double-sided tape. So you can put it on the mirror in your car. You can put it in the mirror in your bathroom. You can put it on your forehead if you really wanted to. You could pluck it onto your existing earring. I, wherever you can see it, be reminded that this is kind of like what faith is. And I want you to continuously reflect on this little diamond. As you know, that's an illustration of my faith. That faith is one thing, but there's many sides to it. Faith is not just one thing. And so God is honored in both our big faith, but also in our small, humble faith. A strong faith is not only characterized by, as we said last week, a boisterous, authoritative truth-declaring, demon-hunting, dead-raising, mountain-moving kind of faith. Who's heard of that kind of a faith? We look at people like them and we go, wow, they have faith, but I don't have faith, so I need to become like them. And we disqualify ourselves because then we think I've got no faith because my faith doesn't match up to that kind of faith. But a strong faith, listen, is also a quiet confidence expressed through obedience to God. Think about three things. Noah building a rescue boat. We've all read the story. It's a story of faith where he had this thought. God said, hey, Noah, I want you to build an ark. 
His response was faith. There was not really anything impressive. He just said, yes, that was faith. The Israelites marching around the walls of Jericho as they enter the promised land of Canaan. What happens? Jesus says, or God says to them, march around the wall for seven days. And they just go. And they just walk around for seven days. And on the seventh day, he says, uh, shout the trumpets. And the walls came down. It was an act of faith. I'm going to trust what God is saying to me. And that was faith. Abraham, being moved by God to a foreign country, said, pack your bags, off you go. Listen, that's not too impressive. Who's with me? That's like you just moved town. But that, Scripture says, was an act of faith. So faith is not just this big, impressive kind of faith that we hear about. It's also a small kind of faith that honors God as well. Hebrews 11 verse 1 probably gives us the best definition of what faith is. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Confident assurance in what we don't see. Similarly to um, Abraham's journey, Marie and I, we were talking about it this week. In, in 2018, we were leading the church since 2015. We were still staying in Fundabale. We felt like we were outsiders pastoring this community. So we said, you know what, we've got to move into town so we can be with the people that we're pastoring. And we moved from Fundabel to Frenichen in April 2018. Um, but we, we couldn't figure out, I didn't diarize it, but it was probably early on in the year, most likely Jan, Feb, could have even been March. The one day I woke up, and you know when you just got this strong sense that God is saying something? There's no audible voice, just where does this thought come from? And the thought I had was pack boxes. So I'm like, I said to Maria, I just had this thought, pack boxes. What did it mean? I don't know, but obviously it, it meant, you know, we were entertaining the idea of moving. We had not secured a place. We didn't know where we were going, what we were doing, how we would afford anything. We just knew God was saying, pack boxes so long. So what did we do? We packed boxes, and we moved into Frenichen by uh, April 2018, and God favored us like, wow, he really did. But, but what we did is we simply acted on a prompting without first seeing the end result. So God didn't say, pack boxes because I'm sending you to that place. God just said, pack boxes. It was a test of our faith. Would we respond? Would we trust God in that small, seemingly insignificant leading? And so don't think faith is just big. Faith is also small. Last week, we said that a diamond is made up from the chemical element called carbon. Faith is made up from the spiritual element called trust. That's, in essence... What faith is all about. It's about trusting God. Now, trusting God can look like different things at different times in our lives. So I want to ask the question today, what are the results of that trust? So if I trust God, what's going to happen? Well, a multifaceted faith has multifaceted results. And all of the results of trusting God are all good. Always good. Every time you decide to trust God, things go well. Hebrews 11 verse 6 is going to be a guiding scripture for us today. It says this, And without faith it is impossible. Impossible. You can try, but without faith it is impossible to please God. Who in this room wants to please God? You want to make God happy. You want to fill His heart. You want to put a smile on His face. Faith is the way that we can do it. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists or trust that he exists and that he, this is interesting, that he what? Rewards. He's a God that rewards. He rewards those who earnestly seek him, not those who half-heartedly seek him. Those who earnestly seek him, he rewards. So two things, faith pleases God. Number two, God rewards faith. Um, I'm a happy daddy when my kids trust me. When I give them a direction, when I give them advice, and they trust me without knowing, I'm like, it feels good to be trusted. I remember years ago, one of my kids, uh, they had a fever, and I knew this medicine works. I said to them, just take it. And they're like, no. I'm like, just trust daddy. Like, I know you take this, it's 15 minutes, and that fever's going to break. And we had this like... This back and forth of, I will not put that in my mouth. I will, and, I, and I just said, just, and I knew what's on the other side. I'm like, trust 
me. And so when my kids didn't trust me, I wasn't a happy dad. Faith pleases God. Faith, secondly, brings rewards. Um, what could those rewards be? It could be answered prayer for something. It could be provision. But you know what the greatest reward is of seeking God earnestly? Finding God. He is the greatest reward. That as I seek God and I come to meet God and know God and grow in my relationship with God, that in itself is the greatest reward. Not what God can do for me or give me and you. It's actually finding Him. So faith pleases God. Faith brings rewards. And thirdly, one of the results of faith, and I want us to think about this as I say it slowly, faith releases the power of God. When last did you think about that? That faith releases the power of God. As believers, I think sometimes we forget that there is a power available to us that is not our own. Do you know that that is available to you? That God himself, as you journey with him, offers a power that is supernatural. It's beyond our natural ability. It's a supernatural power that he gives us so that we can live the life that he wants us to live. So that when I am weak, he is strong. When I can't do it, he can do it. Hey? There's a power available to us. Uh, Timothy, in his book in the New Testament, if you read it, it warns about what's going to unfold in the last days and what people are going to be like. And they're going to be lovers of themselves and all this and disrespect authority, all these things. But one thing it says, it says that there are going to be people who have the appearance of godliness but deny its power. See, so our faith is meant to have a power about it. But in the end days, there's going to be people who call themselves Christians. They put on the mask, but they're actually just powerless. There's just nothing about their faith. There's no true godliness, holiness. There's, there's nothing to it. It's kind of like a, it's like wind. So, so the scriptures teach us that there is a power to our faith. And you know, there's people who will try and reason and rationalize away the power of God. And guess what? They just won't experience that power for themselves. You know, and I, I know that if you've been in the church for a while, there was um, and still is something called the faith movement. And it's really borderline or it is, in fact, manif manifesting, which we spoke about. Name it and claim it. Just say it in Jesus' name and it's yours. And it's like it's a bit of an abuse of God's power that needs to be done in accordance to Scripture. And so many of us have this ugly taste in our mouth because of what faith looks like and what pe people say it actually is. But I would say this, don't allow someone else's confusion about faith to spoil what God still expects from you. So just because someone else got it wrong doesn't mean that you throw the baby out the bathwater. You say, no, faith still pleases God. God still wants me to have faith. So God, help me to have faith properly. Amen? Mark 6, verse 46. We're going to look at two scriptures where Jesus, while he was on earth, was amazed by faith. Okay? So here's the first one, Mark 6. <coughs> then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And listen to this. And because of their unbelief or lack of faith, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at what? At their unbelief or their lack of faith. That word amazed is astonished and awestruck. Jesus stood there with his jaw dropped going. He was amazed at their unbelief. Do you genuinely not believe that I can do this for you people? They didn't realize that he was God in the flesh and that he had a power. Trust me, he was willing and able, but their lack of faith closed the door so he couldn't. Did they steal power away from God? No, they couldn't do that. But they didn't invite it in by faith. And so they closed the door, said, thank you, you can heal a few sick people, but that's about it. We don't have faith to trust you for more. So Jesus stood there, jaw dropped. Mensa? I 
I'll say this as well. Not every struggle we have in life is because of a lack of faith. There's people that will say, you know, this thing's happening in your life because you don't have faith. Okay, a lot of that most times is nonsense. You can find scriptures of many people who suffered justly, innocently, and they were people of faith. Job was one of the best ones. He has his two friends come and counsel him. They sit with him and say, oh, Job, this is happening because you did this and you should do this and you didn't do that. And surely God's unple- I'm not pleased with you. It's a lack of faith, Job. They had zero understanding on the theology of suffering. He was an innocent, blameless, and righteous man, but God allowed suffering so that he could test him, strengthen him, and his story could strengthen our faith today. His friends were wrong. He wasn't suffering because of a lack of faith. He had all the faith necessary. So let's not get confused with what faith is and what faith is not. So here Jesus is. He's amazed at their lack of faith, but let's look at a story of another story of faith. So Jesus enters Capernaum. And a Roman centurion, probably not a believer, he's of the government, a centurion, tells Jesus that he has a servant that is suffering back home. The servant's not even present with him when he comes to Jesus and asks him this. Jesus says, can I heal him? And he even offers to go with him to where his servant is. And listen to the response of the centurion. He says, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. So number one, he acknowledges God. Then he says this, but just say the word. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. What was he doing? He, he, under, he was a man in authority, so he understood Jesus' authority. And he says, just say the word. Just say the word. And, and you read the story, what happened? He was healed, but listen to what Jesus said prior to healing him. Matthew 8 verse 10. When Jesus heard this, what this man said, he was amazed. Now for good reason. He wasn't jaw-dropping for bad reasons. He was jaw-dropping for good reasons. He was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, listen to this, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. He just said, Jesus, you don't have to even come to my house. I just need you to say one word. Just say, he's healed. And Jesus was amazed. Listen, we will experience God's power when we, just like him, have faith. We can experience God's power. Yes, we may need God's power to heal us when we're sick. We must definitely, when we're sick, be trusting God. Touch my body. You are the maker of my body. You put me together. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God, touch me. God, heal me. But, but faith is not just for physical healing. We also need God's power For daily living. We need God's power to help us when it comes to self-control and temptation. You know when that thing's calling for your attention and you need all the power that is not your own to say, no, we need God's power there. We need God's power to love our enemies. Because, listen, I can't love my enemies in my own strength. Jesus says I must and I must pray and bless them, but that's hard to do in my strength. But God, with your power, I can pray for my enemies. Let me tell you, I need power from God to pastor a church. I need God's power to preach on Sundays. I need God's power back at home when I've got a parent because I can't do these things in my own strength. I'm reliant on God. Say, God, your power at work within me so that I can live for you. Another fantastic story we, we read about this wonderful woman with great faith. I'm sure you know the story. Mark chapter 5, say strong faith. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. Now, now this is Jesus in town, and you can imagine the crowds, they've heard about him, and so they want to come hear about what this Jesus is saying and doing. And so a large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, if you are of age, you understand what this means. It was not comfortable. It was difficult. And she had this for many, many years, 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and sadly had spent all she had. Who's been there? It's like this hopelessness. I saw the best specialist in Pretoria. I paid them 100,000 rand and yet nothing. And she did this for 12 years. And instead of getting better, 
she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, stop right there, this you need to understand. You and I get invited into her heart right here. As you read the scriptures, you suddenly are like taken into her heart, into her mind to, to, to understand what she's thinking. And this is what she thought in her heart. She said, if I just touch his clothes... I will be healed. Very similar to the faith of the centurion. I don't have to do much for God to do a lot. And what did she, she, she believed before she saw? She said, if I could just touch his cloak, I will. It was a confident assurance. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Who's with me? That would feel good. 12 years, this release, you just know that is gone. I can feel something different in my body. At once, Jesus realized that, read with me, power had gone out of him. A power that is not our own, a power beyond us is available to us. And as she reached out and touched his cloak, power went out from him. You try and work that one out. Only God. That as you touch the hem of his garments, his supernatural power goes up. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? His disciples say, you see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, thinking she's in trouble. Trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her affectionately, daughter. He welcomes her in. Daughter, your faith. Say my faith. Scripture says, work out your faith with fear and trembling. You know, my faith is not your faith. My faith can't carry your faith. You have to have your own faith in Jesus. Daughter, your faith has healed you. And he sends her off, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Imagine home that day. She went to family and friends, relieved after 12 years. Wow. She experienced the touch of Jesus, the power of God. Three things we note. Her faith issued from her heart. That, that's where faith is. Faith issues from our heart. She said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Again, she believed before she saw. Secondly, her faith caught the attention of God. Jesus was touched in a big crowd, but he was touched differently by her because he felt something go out of him, and he said, who touched my clothes? Suddenly, she caught the attention of God. Thirdly, her faith released God's power. We, we read it said, immediately her bleeding stopped. I want to say that you and I serve the same Jesus today. You and I serve the same Jesus that she touched that day. Do you believe that? It's not a different Jesus. And here's the thing. God's power has not dissipated, but maybe our faith has. God has told us in the Scriptures that I am the same God. I, the Lord, do not change. So God hasn't somehow, just because He's not walking on earth physically, disappeared and now He's powerless. No, 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 his power is still available to us today, but maybe our faith has dissipated. Maybe some of us are guilty of all we do is we study, reason, and rationalize faith so that when we think about power, we're like, no, nah, that's, that's weird. Don't go there. It's dangerous. Okay, I don't want to do the supernatural stuff. No, there's a power of God that is available to you and I, and it's actually meant to be something beautiful. There should be nothing weird about the power of God in our lives. How do we know that the power is still available to us today? Who knows that the book of Acts is still being written? Hey, that's the New Testament church. Jesus departs, he's ascended, he's with the Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit gets sent. And all throughout the book of Acts, and in the New Testament, the epistles, all these, you find the power of God at work in the lives of individuals as they trusted God. Listen to 1 Corinthians 12. This is speaking about gifts of the Spirit, that God gives us His Holy Spirit. What is that? It's His power in us. It's a supernatural power 
It's not something that we conjure up in our own strength. 1 Corinthians 12 says this, The same Holy Spirit gives great faith to another, speaking about gifts, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. So when Jesus was on the earth, you could physically touch, physically touch him and he could heal you. But in the church today, God's given someone, some people, the gift to heal. It's not because they're special, it's because he's special. It's not their power, it's his power. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. New Testament. This power is still available to us today. And you know, we, as I say, we, we can't go and look for Jesus today. We can't go and reach out and touch his cloak. But what we can do is reach out in faith in the same way that that woman did that day. And, and in, our, in our hearts, reach out. And it's this perpetual ongoing trust. It's not just, I trust God when things are falling apart. Business is crashing. My marriage is on the rocks. Now I'm really going to trust in the power of God to resurrect this thing. No, it's, it's every day. It's in the big things, but it's also in the small things. I, I'm always, I'm always reaching out. God, I don't know what to do. I'm reaching out. God, lead me today. That is also a faith that impresses God. In her desperation to be healed, this woman risked being punished by the Mosaic law. Because of her issue of bleeding, she was, number one, considered unclean, and anyone that she touched would have been considered unclean. They had to go through a ritual before they came back to the temple. There was, the law was hectic. We can be glad we don't live then. But, but, but in her desperation, she said, I'm willing to even break the law. We're told that the crowds came and they were pressing up against Jesus. So she, she knew every time she's rubbing shoulders with someone to get closer to Jesus, she's making them unclean. She knows that this is not a good thing. I can get in trouble. That's maybe why she came so scared toward Jesus, thinking, oh, now I'm going to get it. And Jesus doesn't judge her. He honors her faith and he heals her. Why? She chose to open the door herself. Remember, daughter, your faith. She said, I'm going to open the door because I believe that this power is available for me. And I don't know about you, but just reading this story, isn't your faith still a little bit just to say, I should trust God. I, they, now I should reach out to God for, for this or for that. Well, that's exactly what Scripture does. Scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So as we read about the story, we go, wow, why don't I reach out? Imagine if my situation could change, if I in my heart just trusted a confident assurance in things not yet seen. God can do it. We need to, like this woman, bring our issues to Jesus and learn from Peter. We looked at his story last week. What did Peter do? He had faith. He walked on water for a little bit, but it says when he saw the wind, he began to sink. And Jesus had to reach out and grab him. Why? Fear and doubt. Just look at the opposite. Confident assurance, fear and doubt. I believe God can do it. No, he can't. I believe God can do it. No, but let me rationalize. How does two plus two make? No, no, yeah. no, no. A confident assurance. I'm not going to reason. I'm not going to rationalize. I'm just going to trust God. So that diamond again, if you hold on to that. Remember, I want you to hold on to that this week. Stick it wherever you need to and let it be a reminder for you. That faith is a single object, but it's multifaceted. And God's going to stretch your faith, test your faith in many different ways. But let that be a physical reminder for you. And as we close, we, we, this woman, last year in November, um, you can go back and watch it. I preached a message where I said that, that, that something has to, in us, often lift and shift. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my, my head was downcast, but I'm lifting it. And then something has to shift in us to say, I, I've thought like this. I've felt like this for too long. I need to lift and I need to shift. And I think that's exactly what happened in that woman. Sometimes we just coast, coast, coast in our faith. And we, we just, we plateau for too long. And something is like in Africa, you see, skrk wakker. You know, Hey? And we need to lift and come on, I'm going to trust God again for this thing. Stop doubting, stop worrying, trust that His power is available for me right now, today. And, and God, I'm going to give you X, Y, and Z. And God, trusting you, I'm trusting you, I'm trusting you. Because you're, you're a, a living God that walks 
with me. I, I want you to know this, that in reaching out to God, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You've got, you've got nothing to lose, but everything to gain. Yeah, and, and as you reach out in faith, the only thing that God can say is either yes or, and, and you know that his no is a perfect answer as well. That his no is not a hurtful answer. God's saying, no, I know better. So just trust me now. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. He's, he's good. So, so reach out to him and whatever the answer is, whatever the outcome is, trust him with that. But don't go to God and say, God, I'm expecting the best outcome, but in your mind entertain failure. No. Abraham, it says, he did not waver in unbelief. His mind was set on trusting God. Let us pray. And before I pray a prayer that I've prepared, I want you to take your X, Y, Z that you've reasoned, that you've rationalized. And I want you to ask God, God, help me to lift and shift. That this thing has now become an issue of faith, God. That I, money can't fix it. People can't fix it. But just like we learned with this woman, an issue of bleeding, you can fix it. For some of us, it could be physical healing. For some of us, it could be the launch of a business. For some of us, it's a marriage issue, a child issue. God, we've tried and we've tried and it's exhausted us. And we can't do it in our own strength. We're depleted, we're finished. Maybe we should say, God, sorry that it's taken me so long. To come to you. Lord, help me to be like Noah. God, help us to be like Abraham. You know, if we met these people, Lord, we'd probably realize that they're not that impressive. They're just human. But what is impressive is, in fact, their faith in you. That's what made them great. May their faith inspire us to be a people of trust. Trust and surrender are almost the same thing. Give it to God. X, Y, or Z. I'll give you some time just to sit on that. Just reflect, just speak to God. May your faith be stirred by the Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, you say in your word that in the last days there will be people who have a form of godliness but deny its power. May they not be us, Lord. May we choose to be otherwise. May we choose to be godly people who live with that power in our lives, God. That power is not always expressed as something impressive. but It's just a confident assurance that we're people of substance. That even in the the worst of times, most difficult of times, even in the good times, we remain a people that trust you. We throw our whole lives on you. We lean on you, God. May we be stirred on by what we heard this morning, that faith pleases you, God. None of us want to displease you. None of us want to amaze you in a bad way. <laughs> we want to amaze you because of our faith, like that Roman centurion. And Lord, knowing that faith brings rewards, that as we earnestly seek you, you will reward us. We don't always know how, but Lord, let us live motivated by a reward. That God, you won't leave us empty-handed.
So, Lord, help us to live by faith and not by sight, trusting in your perfection and your promises. May your Spirit help us fix our eyes on Jesus so that we may not sink from fear and doubt. Thank you for saving us from drowning in sin and despair through what Jesus did on the cross. We want to please you, Lord, so increase our faith. Amen. Amen. Say strong faith. Someone, you've, you've decided where you're going to put that diamond and be motivated. My, my faith could be as strong as that diamond. You know that they say a diamond is almost indestructible. You, you just can't break it. If you try to bite it, you're going to break teeth before you break diamond. And so say, that's the kind of faith that I want. A multifaceted faith with different kinds of results. And so be encouraged and... Uh, Hope to see you tonight. Lord, we, we ask for your blessing as we step into a new week. May you grace us. May you touch us. May you fill us with your spirit. May we live a week where we lift and shift, where it's almost like this is a different kind of a week, God, because we are walking with you this week. We're not on our own, God. Let us be a church of salt and light in our community this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.